Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Alt Kings podcast. I'm your host, Tate, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with the CEO and co founder of Galaxy, Solo CZ. How are you doing today, Solo? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. It's a real pleasure to have you. You're doing big things for this space, you're doing big things for the entire industry. And I'd love to know right out the get go who is Solo CZ and what inspired the creation of Galaxy app? Yeah, sure. So my name is Solo. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Galaxy, 29 years old. What inspired us to start Galaxy? I guess prior to Galaxy, I actually was an investment banker. So I worked in New York for about half a decade. My older brother, and I should note my co-founder, Spencer Dinwiddie, he plays on the Los Angeles Lakers. Had a pretty good game last night, actually. But he and my older brother are best friends. And depending on the day, they could be considered my younger brothers. (laughs) But basically, my brother had reached out to me one day saying that Spencer had an idea of wanting to tokenize his contract. And I was a securitization banker at Citi, which is a somewhat similar concept, but it uses similar paradigms and thoughts, finding ways to unlock trapped liquidity and usually illiquid assets. And so that's where our journey started. We wanted to help tokenize people that had sports contracts, people that had music libraries, all this different types of stuff. But it gave way to the proof of concept. So he was able to securitize himself, became the first player to do, got sued by the NBA in the process, but ended up winning. But it kicked off a journey into Web3, that is the one that we're on now, which is Galaxy, which is trying to help tokenize all aspects of our life and really finding ways to bring Web3 um, you know, to our lives and really make real life activities happen on chain. Amazing. And I think that's all amazing. I want to dive a little more into Spencer Dinwiddie. Can you share some insights on what it's like to work alongside an NBA player and have him as a partner in the development of Galaxy? <laughs> yeah, no, Spencer's great. He's honestly an unbelievable weapon to have. Obviously, he's what originally got me started off in Web3. He taught me most of what I knew to begin with. And nice. I'd say he's, a, like I said, great weapon, great resource. We were able to do a lot of different things, especially when it comes to outreach and be able to be our voice. And his role being our executive chair is to really sit there and see the market and really use his insights and his platform to better our opportunities and really help secure those higher level BD opportunities. But on a day to day, super competitive, super upbeat, and everything is high priority all the time, which is great. So it does feel like we're always at sports practice. Practice never really ends for him. Goes in the locker room and then he comes back on the other side, a, a different man. So it's definitely been fun getting to to do this with some of your closest friends. Most definitely. And that's got to be quite an experience as well as the opportunity that it lies with reach. Uh, NBA is one of the biggest industries, sports industries within the United States and across the globe. And having a player like Spencer, utilizing him and his connections as well is only going to grow Galaxy, so on and so forth. And didn't he just get recently traded to the Lakers by chance? I think that's right. Yeah, exactly. He played his first two games this week and last week, or I guess yesterday, and or I guess this week actually was his first two games. Nice. So we're super excited for him. He's a Los, he's from Los Angeles. Nice. Kobe Bryant's his favorite player. So it was a whole opportunity for him. So it's divine timing, right? Ahead of the bull run, it's serendipitous that Bitcoin ETF was approved a couple weeks ago. So it seems like things are all on the up. <laughs> Most definitely. And getting to play alongside players like LeBron James and Anthony Davis Just being able to just tell them about Galaxy is going to be popping up so much interest, not only into their heads, but into any person that they might spread Galaxy onto as well. And it just constantly opens up the door to new opportunities, new networking opportunities and whatnot. It's quite exciting. And that really caught my eye whenever I saw the recent event of him getting traded to the Los Angeles Lakers, but also him being a partner in the entire process. I'd like to also dive into Galaxy has been making waves in the creator economy with a focus on empowering creators to monetize their content. Can you share some of the most successful monetization strategies that creators have implemented on the platform by chance? Yeah, absolutely. I think one thing that makes Galaxy really unique is that the suite of tools we've built are pretty, pretty plug and play out of the box. And there's a lot of different customizability that goes into the process of setting a creator shop up. And so everybody's shop is different and what they choose to offer to their fan bases is really tailored to what their communities really go for. And so up until Galaxy being launched, it was very difficult for somebody, celebrity chef to use the same platform that a TikTok star or an NBA player might use. A lot of these platforms platforms really had a set of tooling, but it wasn't expansive enough to really catch, to be a catch-all net 
for creators. And so our focus is really to enable and really get these types of toolings available to different types of creators so that they can monetize in the ways that are effective. We're seeing people take things like the video call feature in our platform and branding it as a cooking class or taking it and offering jump shot lessons as well. And so some of those bespoke offerings have been really good. And so the way our platform works is there's two types of products. We call those the core primitive products. These are things that the fan sets the context. So you can turn on something like video messages, video calls, you're receiving these requests and their fans will tailor made these requests based off of what they're looking for. And then on the other side of it, there's the custom experiences or sorry, featured experiences um, where people or creators are able to take the video call feature and brand it, like I mentioned, and offer a bespoke experience. There's also a feature called special request where you can essentially field any request for a certain minimum threshold. And so it's really just all these different types of strategies to be able to monetize content in a way that's been very difficult for quite some time. And so we've been super excited to see some of those unique, there's a creator that's offering specific basketballs and art that she's deciding that's physical goods as well. And then you have different creators that are offering makeup tutorials because they have a lot of looks that they're doing. And so there's a lot of customizability within our marketplace. And so we want Galaxy to be the place where people discover all different types of creators and experiences. Most definitely. And this is a one of one Web3 app, that's for sure. Is there any Web2 apps that you could considerably compare this to in any sort of way, shape or form? I would say the best ones are probably the, the maybe Telegram, if you really think about it. Telegram's like a, a good comparison on the Web2 side. I'd say Telegram and X are probably yeah. the, the other ones, or, or maybe even like a Venmo or a Zelle. But I've already named five. So I guess that changes the, the question that you asked. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's really nothing like it. It's really when you think about things like taking a non-custodial wallet and marrying it with these social paradigms that we're used to, there's a lot of amazing things that can happen. And that's what we're starting to see. And so we've recently been out there, recently released a new feature that allows you to send crypto as easy as the text message through the messaging portion of our application. So hence the comparison to Telegram. But when you really think about the power of a non-custodial wallet and marrying it that to a social graph, there's all different types of activity and commerce and trade and collaboration that can really happen in Web3. And all of this type of collaboration has been very difficult to really do in the space, just given that the places we congregate are so fragmented, right? You have a lot of people that live on X, you have a lot of people that are in Telegram, Discord chats, and there's no cohesive experience that really connects the wallet. It's all these fragmented places where you manage community and then you sit that separately from the digital assets. But Calyxie is really marrying those two paradigms so that bringing things and doing things on chain is not just possible, but honestly fun and easy and convenient to do. Most definitely. It incubates everything and it it brings everything together where creators can create and their fans can support in the ways that they, the creators offer in any way, shape or form, really. I'd love to know now, what are some of the bigger names that are already on Galaxy's app currently speaking by chance? We have a couple of different types of like big TikTok stars. So like you have those types of people, you have some of the web three stars. So people in this podcast, you have people like Crypto Mason, who's in there, who's offering a different a number of different types of things. You have a couple of athletes in there that are offering things as well. And so there's just a lot of different types of experiences in there. But again, I think the, the number one thing about what we've realized in this process early days is that there's really something for everyone here. And so that's the beauty of it. There's a different, I can't even go through and I probably we won't name any more than the ones I just named just because I won't want to play favorites. But there's a lot of different types of ones. But again, I think the the other aspect of it too is just realizing a lot of the community-led features and initiatives yeah. that we've built that really make the wallet paradise, the, the w- wallet paradigm, something that's not that difficult to navigate and really creates that public square, that kind of place of refuge for Web3 to, to, to really inhabit and hang out as that public square. Most definitely. Is it hard to pitch new creators to onboard them to Galaxy? What's that pitch like whenever, because like most creators out there, they have their go-to platforms already that they're building on. And with these platforms, you have everything pretty much that most creators are currently used to utilizing. But what's that pitch like to reach out to these creators to onboard them back to Galaxy? I think you have to understand that with anything, it's really like any marketplace dynamic, you have switching costs and you have to find a way to convey that your vision and that your pitch eliminates what those switching costs might perceive to be. And thinking about the world of Web2 or the current social media paradigm that we exist in today, it's actually quite difficult to convince a creator to 
leave the paradigms that we have because it's intentionally done like these big platforms have owned the world of social and the way in which we've interacted with each other for more than a decade at this point and they're understanding better how to control the traffic that happens in the public square they set up and so i think when you look at a creator and really justifying what it makes sense for them to you know come and establish a presence on your platform you really have to obviously make them comfortable in doing so you're a new and upcoming platform you have to have the promise the team um, is very important the people in which that they're going to be interacting with it can't just be one person but they have to feel like they're coming together to, to a good group of people yeah. a good team a good organization that has good quality products and engineers and then on top of that it's also making sure that the economics of doing so aren't impacted right like you have to think about the way in which that people are currently monetizing and really understanding what is the opportunity cost for making that switch and really finding a way to minimize whatever that switching cost might be has really been the key for us and i think one thing that's been helpful for us is that us being who we are we have access to an extensive contact list or expensive rolodex of people that can be natural targets and so obviously as we get up into bigger, once we continue to add these integrations, add these different communities and really seed our marketplace with a, with an initial cohort of users, we're going to be really excited to see all the creators that come in and launch their shops and start monetizing on the platform. Most definitely. And going back to a guy like LeBron, who's got well over 100 million followers on like Instagram, if you were to just create a Galaxy app account, that's going to bring in thousands of users regardless. And he's just one of many people that you have potential connection with to onboard to the platform. Keeping relevancy is key in this ever growing industry, I'd say. And you have to stay relevant to really truly succeed and stick out beneath the crowd. I'd love to know what are some of the steps you are taking to ensure that Galaxy remains on the forefront of this rapidly evolving space? As yeah, tech bands are like minimal nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think for us, it really lies in that end utility that a user yeah. gets from coming to our platform. And I think it's really coming down to once you get a user into the door, what can they do here and really maximizing the time spent and really maximizing maybe not even the time spent because to your point, there is that attention, that intention issue that we have today. Yeah. It's very hard. Definitely. Attention's fleeting, very difficult. Attention's very much so fleeting these days. But I think it's not even about the time spent, it's, but it's the utility unlocked. How quickly can people interact with the blockchain and do things they ordinarily couldn't before? And I think that's one thing that makes Galaxy quite unique, right? And so when you think about Galaxy, we call ourselves the social wallet. And what we really mean by that is, is when you take these social paradigms and the community building, you have these social tools in these infrastructures, you have these mental models, like sending crypto in the same way of sending a text. Once you make moving on-chain assets as easy as that, you're all of a sudden creating and unlocking so much utility within the wallet that all of a sudden the amount of transactions people are able to perform, it's like as easy with the gesture of a finger. Yeah. Why is sending crypto as easy more than a couple keystrokes? But it's currently not. Right. If I asked you, Tate, when was the last time you paid a friend back with crypto? When was the last time that was the case? Never. Have actually. you ever paid it back? Never. You've never done that? No. Right. And we have a multi-trillion dollar asset class yeah. and peer-to-peer -peer payments is the best use case and no one's using it. And so when you start thinking about the ways in which you unlock that utility, that's how we see ourselves as that unique product. There really isn't anything like that sort of Venmo or Zelle type social fi product that really makes doing activities on chain easy. And I think that's what we aim to be our superpower. And obviously amongst us knowing the creators and having a really good relationship with them, we call our, we have this tagline called for creators by creators. And it really much so represents and resonates with the idea that a lot of the creators that we are close to have really been key integral pieces to helping us refine that user experience to the one that you guys see today. Nice. Did you ever get that $500 back from Spencer? Oh, uh, no, dude. <laughs> Long gone. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. That was a great explanation, though, on live TV, I got to say. And it definitely opens the door up to just Web2 users who might be interested in Web3 to go to a social platform where they can utilize not only crypto, but just their day and day social media. It's going to constantly start to turn people's heads to help them realize how efficient and effective cryptocurrency transactions can be. And it's quite shocking that I did have to say no, because yes, you're right. I, I have never sent a crypto transaction to pay a friend back because most of my friends aren't really accepting and open to the idea of cryptocurrency just yet. And I think it's because it's the friction really throws people yep. off when you have this long string of a wallet address or on Hedera's case, just a small string of numbers. 
where it can be somewhat complex and there also can be risk that come along with say maybe getting one letter or one number wrong then you lose all of that money exactly. where in Galaxy say you just have their contact and you can send it directly to that contact and it's just like sending say Apple Pay via iMessage Absolutely and we've even introduced an evolution to that feature earlier this week which allows you to text people or SMS text people from inside the Galaxy Messenger similar to WhatsApp or inviting somebody so you could actually send crypto to somebody who doesn't even have a wallet yet yeah. and that's something that's really easy and it, once they click that link they go through the sign up flow they sign up with the same phone number all of a sudden that crypto lands in their wallet. And so now you're really getting into this world where we increase the amount of transactions that could actually in theory happen. Because prior to that, there's so many different opportunities you could have used crypto to pay a friend back, yeah. but you would never do so just because sending fiat is so easy. You could do it on accident, right? Like we never, we don't have these types of tools. And when you think about crypto, right? Like when Satoshi invented Bitcoin, PayPal already existed. One click send money already existed. And so there can't be, I can't accept in my mind that we, he or they or whoever they might be didn't think that the wallet was in its prototypical stage when we were using this technology in its nascency. We are so much so in our nascency. And I think that's where the ecosystem or the, the industry really needs to think about it. Because if we expect Bitcoin to go to 150K, 200K, all the people that are calling for those numbers, blockchain is going to need to start to show up in the everyday lives of everyday consumers if that is going to be the case. And in order for that to happen, we need to have people and builders within our ecosystem self-police and obviously challenge the paradigms that we've built that have gotten us here and understanding and recognizing that what got us here, while it has been super critical, integral to us being part of having and gone down this journey, it's not going to be what gets the next 100 million people to join us on this yeah. journey. Most definitely. I know you guys recently came out and rolled out a new update. you mind highlighting anything that was updated on that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I was talking about with the SMS yeah. text feature. So now you can invite friends to Galaxy um, through the SMS text feature. We've added some other design elements and changes. We started denoting chain specific things. And so if you have USDC in your wallet, you can now see that it's branded by Hedera. So we're currently live on the Hedera network, but we'll be adding network support quite soon. So you'll start to see in parts of the application that we've hinted at that, that this is USDC, but it's Hedera USDC. And then eventually you'll have Ethereum based USDC and so on and forth. And so we were super excited about that feature going live with a bunch of other small tweaks and stuff, but it's going create quite crazy. We've seen a, a very uptick in usage and daily active usage, user app downloads and all of those things, which have been really great because we've been able to use the network effects of people using their contact logs to essentially invite their friends in the Galaxy, which has been super exciting. Nice. As Galaxy continues to grow, how do you plan to balance user privacy and security with fostering a thriving social environment for creators and their fans? Yeah, no, absolutely. This is a great question. Security is at the core of our product, yeah. and that's honestly why we built it the way that we did. When you think about what a blockchain allows you to do, and with being able to track events on chain so that you have immutability with the record of which events taking place at the forefront of our marketplace, that was the at inception, that was the premise that we built Galaxy. And so that's been a, a core fundamental pillar of ours is building with that end user in mind. At the same time, we want to leverage technologies like Hedera that have very high security standards. It's ABFT, fault tolerant. Yep. Thinking about the highest grade of security has been at the forefront of what we've been doing, but continuing to foster an environment where we're continually speaking with our speaking with our uh, with our users and really understanding kind of the pain points and frictions on that user journey and obviously pushing uh, for the most simplistic user journey possible with in mind that obviously a lot of the the hard parts or the difficult parts of the user journey with crypto come with the security that is crypto. Yeah. And so it's that back and forth balancing act of wanting to push for the industry standard to to grow and mature over time, but obviously keeping the end user in mind and being very being very uh, on top of the, the end user experience and really being close to that and really keeping those core prim principles in mind is how we plan on uh, keeping close uh, on track and using security, uh, building products with uh, high secure standards. Nice. And it definitely starts with fostering a strong team of engineers and people who are, I guess it'd be aware in that specific sector of the industry, who are more or less capable of understanding everything that it takes to make sure that things are as secure as they could possibly be. I'd love to know, as an entrepreneur, you have your highs and your lows. What are some of the most significant challenges Galaxy has faced since its launch, and how have you addressed them? 
today? A uh, good question. I would say that with a project like this, people have very high expectations. And I think being able to continually stay focused on the goal and tuning out the noise can definitely be tough and challenging, especially yeah. for a young team like ours. And we've been building. And so when you build something with Galaxy, like Galaxy, that has such a high design standard, have a high you know level of functionality that's being demanded from the devs that they got to go build that. Some of these things have never been built in Web3 ever. And I think there's a reason for that is because it's quite challenging. But I think the hard part is obviously listening to the noise where people may have their doubts about whether or not you're going to build it, whether they have doubts on whether you guys are good actors going to build it just because of the, the turmoil that has come through our space. It's made it very difficult of a place. And obviously, when you're thinking about Web3 technologies and not that people are distrusting, but they're reluctant or I guess maybe prudent to to evaluate whether or not something is worth being trusted or ver- or trustworthy. And so I think from our perspective, the biggest challenge was obviously tuning that out, knowing that we've been producing good work internally. We knew what our product looked like. We know what we were about. We know how much effort we were putting into it. And so I think the biggest challenge was remaining focused. And late last year, uh, or I guess maybe at the beginning of 2022, it was, we decided to really scrap the original MVT product that we had completely and redesign it from the ground up. And that pushed us out quite some time, development time-wise, but we also thought of it as a good opportunity to build. We got the, the depths of the bear market. And so there was definitely that opportunity to capitalize on the fact that there was going to be minimal traffic within the space. And so it was a good time to build. But I think that was definitely the biggest challenge is keeping the team, not necessarily the team excited because they were obviously really excited about what we had been doing. But I think yeah. just allowing the team to, to tune out the noise of whatever people might be saying, just given that it had been taking a long time and it was a tall order for us to, to, to get here. Resets aren't necessarily always bad, I have to say. They definitely can help give yourself a second sort of opinion and perspective on things whenever you take a step back and realize, hey, let's start from the beginning again. Let's see where we can make things better and let's more or less recraft this product that we were starting to create, but let's craft it better this time, wouldn't you say? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think us getting doing the re, the entire rebuild was exactly what this company needed. We work really closely with our content creators. And so what you guys are now seeing are the fruits of that labor and really getting close to them. It's, what do you dislike about it? We honestly got into a room with our creators and they tore it apart, tore the application apart. They said, we dislike this and this. And it was really tough because we wanted them to compare it to Instagram. And that was our standard. And you would be so surprised how much more difficult it is if you told somebody, if you told me how difficult it was to build Instagram in 2020, I would be like, yeah, that's probably nearly impossible. I know how much more impossible that is than I couldn't have even known in the past. It's a tall order. Yeah. And I'm curious to know now, based off of that, do you utilize AI at all for any of the development, maybe copy, copying or referencing other APIs or whatnot to help assist with the development process? Or is it just straight from school? Honestly, not that I know of. We do not. I wouldn't speak on behalf of my team, but I would imagine they do not. <laughs> but sense. we do I only have a strong team. AI is constantly getting more and more relevant on yeah. a daily basis. And it seems as if things are being capable of being developed a lot more easily with the use of AI. And it was just a question that kind of popped up off the top of my head. <laughs> I know you already mentioned you plan on integrating other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum onto the app down the road. Is there any tokens that you want to integrate for the messaging and others features like donating, like cryptocurrency specifically, like XRP, Cardano? Is there any that you personally like the most right now outside of HBAR? I would say that I, I'm a big fan of a lot of the community-led ecosystems, the one that have very vibrant communities. Because again, I think it's going back to that, have you ever used crypto to pay back a friend? And a lot of people don't, but a lot of other communities and ecosystems are really focused on real world use cases and really bringing real life on chain. And so yeah. I think those types of ecosystems, so you mentioned it, like the XRPs of the world, the flows of the world, yeah. those ecosystems, Solanas of the world, they're really pushing forward the boundaries of getting adoption and really focused on getting people using this technology. And so for us, similarly, we want to partner with those labor ones and obviously add those integrations as necessary, just so that we can also contribute to the overarching goal of the industry, which is obviously more usage. Amazing. One of my last questions to you, Solo, would be as the CEO of Galaxy, what is your long-term vision for the platform and what do you hope to see achieved within the next few years? 
Ooh, long-term vision. Obviously, I think number one, we want to listen to our users. We want to build a product that really makes sense for our market. We're not trying to retrofit what we've built into people's lives, but we want to build for people's lives. In terms of where I see Calyxy or the goals for it, obviously, I think when we think about the social wallet, we want to be the wallet that everyone needs. When you think about the iPhone and what made it so great is that before the iPhone, browsing the web on a mobile device was awful as a concept. When Before the iPhone, taking pictures with your phone was something you would never really want to do. And so if you go back far enough, some phones didn't take pictures, right? You actually used to have to download the pictures from your DSLR camera or your digital camera onto your computer and then sync them to your phone so that you can show them to people. That's essentially where NFTs are, right? When you think about Pretty the much, technology. Yeah. But we thought about a world where your your wallet should be able to take a picture and mint that as an NFT. We think of a world where your wallet should be able to send crypto as easy as a text. We think your wallet should be able to have a social feed and ecosystem filters so they can create token gated experiences and communities. These are all things that we think the next hundred million people are gonna wanna need, are gonna wanna use in a wallet for them to get them using wallets every single day, right? It's the idea of instead of having your digital camera in your phone, somebody had the crazy idea of putting a camera on the phone. And then all of a sudden the iPhone became amazing. If the iPhone could only make calls, we wouldn't be using them all the time. And that's the problem with wallets right now. The wallets only do so much. And I think what we're really trying to do is push that standard of what we really think a wallet can and should be used for and really applicating and elevating those use cases to, to surface them up for the end user. Most definitely. Making it more accessible for the mass. Is that a great way to sum it up? Yeah, for sure. We want to be the wallet that logs into your DoorDash and you can pay for your food with crypto. I've been saying incredible. it a lot. So hopefully if DoorDash is listening one day or listening to this, we'd want to be that type of wallet. Most definitely. You're an established entrepreneur and this is my final question. It's more or less just for any other entrepreneurs out there. Is there any advice that you'd give to anybody who wants to become an entrepreneur, start their journey in the world of finance or business, and they want to create a product? Is there any advice you'd give out to them? I would say that it's really important to have a very strong reason why. A lot of people want to be an entrepreneur just because they think being an entrepreneur is cool, but unfortunately that doesn't fall into the category of strong reason why. And so I think I would say that my journey has been quite rewarding, but at the same time, it wasn't anything that I forced. A lot of these things came quite natural. And I think if you want to be a business owner, you want to be an entrepreneur, obviously there's things that you should do, continue to meet and discuss, build out your network of other entrepreneurs so you can get a better sense, but honestly get informed on something, solve a problem. Like you really have to become passionate about things about the world and figuring out things that you'd want to solve. And I think that's where it really starts is having a strong why and the fundamental reason why. And I think until that problem is solved, that's going to be what pulls you back into the work every single day, even when it's not fun to do. Most definitely. And I'll tell you what my why was to inform the uninformed. And that's what we're here doing today. Solo, any closing <laughs> thoughts? Appreciate your time once again. No, for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. And obviously, super exciting times ahead for the entire space and looking forward to the rest of this year. Incredible. And ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, this has been the Alt Kings podcast. If you enjoyed today's com content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All the solos links will be down below, and we will see you all in the next episode. Peace. states today.